It is uh, tick season here in the Hudson Valley. You know, we reported uh, last week that I guess, you know, ticks are like blowing up like crazy this year for some reason. We're going to try to get to the bottom of it and figure out if there's uh, maybe something we can do to protect ourselves and our family from all these ticks. So we've got a uh, senior scientist at the Cary Institute on the phone, uh, Dr. Richard Ostfeld. Uh, good morning, Richard. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm so impressed. You're the most impressive person we've ever had on the Boris and Robin show. <laughs> well, I'm not sure how the, how I count as that, but thanks very much. Yeah, the bar is very low, though. So don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't get too it excited. Must be. No, I appreciate you joining us this morning. Now, um, explain to us, why are there so many more ticks expected uh, this year? Well, I'm not sure there are. Um, oh, okay. You know, almost every year is a bad year around here, at least to some extent. We have a an area, we live in an area in the country where risk is about as high as it can get, meaning that there are lots and lots of infected ticks. Um, there are some folks who have predicted that this is going to be a bad year because there was a lot of snow cover, and snow is an insulator and can protect ticks against extreme cold, um, extreme dryness, and things like that. Um, but we've been looking at our, our long-term data. We've been studying ticks for almost 25 years now uh, at the Cary Institute, and we don't find a strong relationship between snow cover and the abundance of ticks the next spring or summer. Uh, what we do find, though, is that uh, we find a very strong relationship between how many white-footed mice there were the previous summer and how many tick nymphs there are mm. in the next summer so. or, or spring. And so by that calculation, we expect this to be sort of a moderate year. Uh, the mice were pretty low last summer, and so we're looking at, you know, risk will still be something you need to worry about, but I don't think it's going to be a terrible year. Well, that's good news. Yeah. I, I, yeah, like I mean, I'm, I'm used to gloom and doom. <laughs> Almost everything I tell people makes them anxious or depressed. Uh, so this is one of those cases where the message isn't quite so terrible. Yeah, but you know, even for our area, if it's not as bad, it's still pretty bad. I, I already pulled a uh, tick out of my son's forehead uh, this season, so, yeah, so I know well, they're out there. That's true. It's, it, that's a, an important point for listeners is that uh, even if this is a kind of a moderate or even moderately low year, as we expect, it's still a season to start looking out. You have to take care and protect yourself against ticks. Now, what exactly can you do? Is, is there? We have a bunch of tips uh, that we found. We put up on our website from people mm-hmm. that are saying anything from, uh, you know, making sure to uh, plant lots of uh, different flowers that keep ticks away, like peppermint and um, yeah. chrysanthemums and things like that, uh, to, you know, putting cotton balls soaked in pesticide outside so the mice use them for nests and kill the ticks. Right. Does anything like this work? Is there anything you can do to, to minimize the amount of ticks in your yard? Well, so, yeah. So let me first give you a disclaimer. So, so as a scientist, I am a well-trained skeptic. I'm, I'm a paid skeptic. I'm, I'm a person who uh, has been trained to let the evidence tell me uh, what's important, what works, what doesn't work. And there are a, a large number of folk remedies out there that are either untested, and so no science has been done, people recommend them nevertheless, or the science doesn't show them to be um, helpful in any meaningful way. <clears throat> so the things like planting particular plants that might repel ticks, or, or I've seen websites that urge people to plant um, deer-proof uh, shrubs, those have not been shown to give any benefit in terms of reducing the number of ticks on your property. Um, if, the tick, if there's a patch of peppermint, even if that does have tick repellent properties, um, the ticks might go elsewhere. And if you're not standing there all day in your peppermint patch, you're still going to be at risk. <laughs> yeah. the, um, the, the cotton balls that have been soaked in an insecticide, you know, so this is, there, there's a commercial product you can buy or you can do it yourself. Um, you, the, the idea is that the mice, and we know that the mice are very important in producing infected ticks, um, the mice will go and retrieve these cotton balls. They like to use them as nesting material, and if they're impregnated with insecticide, they bring them back to their nests, and it kills the ticks on them and in their nests. Um, this is, there are some studies that have shown that to be effective. Um, there's a little bit of a disclaimer because um, the people who showed it to be effective also were responsible for inventing the product and had a, a financial stake in selling them. There are independent scientists who've looked at the efficacy of those uh, 
tick tubes, as they're called, and have found them not to be very useful. All right. So what, what, can, we, what can we do? Is there, I mean, is there something that, uh, that you would suggest people do in their yards? Well, it's, this is a frustrating area of research because there are many things that are shown not to help and a few things that are shown to help, um, but it's, it's an area that's lacking in research funding, so we need to know a lot more. But, but for the time being, we know that there's a fungus that you can buy. It's actually a native fungus, so it's not something that we're introducing from some distant place that's quite effective at killing ticks, and it's been bred to be um, to have low and non-target effects, so it doesn't nail the honeybees and butterflies and things that we don't want to be killing. Um, so that's a, a fungus that I think is it's called MET52, or it's, it might be marketed in a, under TickX, so that works and is non-toxic, um, un- to, unlike many of the chemical pesticides. They work well. I mean, a lot of the, the so-called pyrethroids, things that you can buy in the local nursery, um, they work to kill ticks. But there are studies that show that even, even though they're reducing the abundance of ticks crawling around on your property, <clears throat> they have no effect on the number of ticks uh, that are found on people or people's likelihood of getting a tick-borne disease. Now, where, where would one get this, uh, this fungus that you said that is, uh, is effective? Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I think it's, it's something to look up on the web. I think, the, you know, there is a commercial product. I, I'm not sure if it's still available. I know that it's been well-tested for both its efficacy in killing ticks and its what's called specificity. So you, what you want is something that kills ticks but not many other things, and this uh, MET-52 strain is pretty good at that. Well, what, you know, it, what's it, it like, though? Is it, does it come, what kind of form does it come in? Is It, like it a comes liquid? in a powder, uh, and um, I'm, I'm not sure. I think you can both, like many things that you spray on your property, I think you can either uh, apply it in its powder form or make a solution. Right. Well, I, you know, I assume it's growing on our producers. I'm just going to have him walk barefoot in my backyard. <laughs> and <I've, laughs> He's got all sorts of fungus growing on him. So, well, uh, as long as you're paying them for it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, he just, we don't pay him. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Osfeld, I appreciate you uh, joining us, senior scientist at the uh, Cary Institute. Uh, great information. I, a little good information, I guess, that the uh, the ticks aren't going to maybe be as bad as we thought. But uh, Well, that's my prediction, yeah. yeah. All right, so, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll watch and keep checking. I appreciate it. Check your yep. body okay. every night. Yes, that's absolutely true. Protect yourself. Use repellents. Use protective clothing. Those are all very useful for uh, keeping us the ticks at bay. All right. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Okay. You're very welcome. Bye.